Today we're going to go over how to set up the uh, Hardwire PDM28 to talk to the Holly EFI. So I've made another video previously about how to get Holly to send information over to Hardwire. And recently, um, George and Joseph Andrews and myself all worked together and we got this figured out. So big thank you to George and to George from Hardwire Electronics and Joseph Andrews for, um, for helping us with their helping with this project. So first step, let's open up the Hardwire, uh, pro PDM configurator. And, um, what you're going to want to do right now, I'm just going to go into offline, but, um, so we're going to select PDM 28. And now we need to load our config. So we'll go to configuration, go to load, and I'm just going to grab my config right here. So if you've already got your config open, you should already know your way around this a little bit, but um, I just wanted to kind of show it from, from the start on how to do this. So we've got our config. And uh, something I want to point out, um, you need to be on version 1.1.6 in order for this to function. So... Uh, we've already discussed this, the CAN inputs. We already went over this. Um, these are all the, the CAN inputs. We've got RPM. We've got a whole bunch of stuff here, right? So anyway, let's look at CAN outputs. So my personal car has a Blink Marine 15 button with dials um, keypad in it. And then uh, we've got a whole bunch of outputs being used to do all different types of stuff here and uh, a whole bunch of hardwired inputs, right? So physically wired up inputs right here. So a lot of this stuff is wired up um, prior to getting all of the CAN bus stuff working. So on a new installation, there's a lot of stuff that we don't need to wire up, like RPM from the ECU, the transmit. We don't need to wire up all this kind of stuff uh, anymore. So let's get to the CAN outputs. So click on CAN outputs, and you won't have these listed, but... Um, uh, what you'll do is you'll hit add and you'll notice it adds a 10th one right here. So you can name it whatever you want. But what we're doing is we're sending data via CAN from hardwire over to Holly. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go over the hardwire setup first, cause that's a little bit harder. And then we're going to go over the, uh, Holly setup. So if, you want to learn how to do this. This may be a little bit long of a video, but I'm going to do my best to try to make it as quick as possible. It's just there's a good bit of information in here that you're going to need. So let's look at the first thing, right? So let's just say we're going to set up uh, output number one. This is These are already set up, so we're just going to go over them, and I'll show you how to do it on output number 10. So hit expand. I have it labeled as boost knob. So it is wired. My CAN bus on hardwire is wired to CAN bus number one. Um, so you have to select the correct CAN bus that you're on, right? ID format would start off as standard. You're going to change it to extended. This is the ID. I'm not going to spend a bunch of times on ID. Um, if you're interested in the IDs, peep this. There you go. Um, screen capture that or whatever. There you go. So uh, this gives you a rundown of the hardware CAN ID in uh, decimal. Then we've got hex. Then what the Holly CAN ID, what the Holly broadcast rate is, what CAN channel, the CAN device, and the CAN type. So um, it turns to red when we go to a second I.O. module. We do not need a physical I.O. module to make this work. We're just simulating an I.O. module. So, all right, let's get back in hardwire. So the ID, this is the first one, right? We want this to be the first one. So there's our ID. Um, the easiest way to do this is to literally... Once you have your Excel sheet, um, you know, copy this, come on over here, and you'll notice they're the same. And then you can just hit Control V, and it dumps it in there for you. So, um, and then this is the uh, the ID in hex. So, once we get to a second, you'll notice that once we get to a second I/O module or past eight outputs, really that's all that matters is that we're past eight outputs. 9 through 16, we have updated these CAN ID outputs by one number. So, um, this is covering 16 outputs, which I feel is plenty. Um, so, you know, the number changes from 824 to 825. So, 505, 421, 824. When we get to the second 
the ninth output or the second CanIO module uh, emulation, it goes up by one value or one number. So, all right, there's your ID. You're going to set up send mode as periodic. Send frequency can be 10 hertz. Um, that's the way that Holly's looking at it. Um, and then payload side is size is four. And then what you'll do is you'll change your data format from, I think it starts off at 8-bit. And if you notice it's at 8-bit, it opens up four uh, channels, right? But when we change it over to float, there we go. Um, that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, what you need to do here is decide what you want to send over. So if we click on this right here, um, you can search, you know, up here if you want to. But this was a simple one. This was just the boost knob, right? So I've got one of the dials on the um, on the keypad, and uh, we use it. We're going to start using it for um, for doing offsets, and I'll show you that in Holly software as well. So dial position, right? So all I did was I go can keypad one, button number 11, boost knob, dial position. And now it's going to send over that dial position to the ECU, right? Um, now let's walk you through this, right? So this is a new one. So we'll go ahead and expand. Let's call, we don't know what we're going to call it yet because I don't know what we're going to send over yet. So hit expand. We're on CAN bus one, extended. So this is our 10th output, right? So if this is our 10th output, we'll come over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right, so we go control C, ID, we'll come over here. Go control V, bam, there's our ID. Send mode periodic, send frequency 10 hertz. Payload size is 4 bytes. We're going to change the data format to float. And then here we go, we select what we want to send. So there's a whole ton of stuff that we can send, right? So if you want to just send, let's just send the total current amount that's coming out of the PDM, right? So there you go. So we can just call this uh, um, total current, right? Or, or total amps, right? There we go. Okay. So dot amps, bingo. So now we've got the 10th one set up. Here's the water pump amperage. So I find this kind of useful, right? Like maybe we could put this on the, on the dash or whatever, the, how many amps that the uh, water pump is drawing. So same deal, CAN bus 1 extended. There's the ID. This is our second output. If we go back over to our boom right there, right, 505-438-208. This is where this all this information right here is not published anywhere. It's not easy to find. It's not public. I mean, it is now. Um, it's not public. It's uh, George uh, spent a good bit of time figuring this out. Okay. George and uh, and Joseph Andrews, they both they both invested a good bit of time into, into making this work. Um, so this is a really cool thing that actually functions and it was done by a great group of people. So um, send frequency 10 hertz, payload size, yada, yada number four or four, four bytes. And then we just like, I just selected water pump current. All right. So once you're done with all these, right. Once that you, you set up as many outputs as you want, um, you will, you have to enable this by the way, but once you set up all your outputs, um, you would go up here and hit uh, save and, um, we could do, so I have it right here with like a vert config updated can output. Um, and then like, we'll just do this and go rev two, revision two. So save. We load that into the PDM and we're good to go with the PDM side of it. So now let's look at the Holly side of it. Okay. So boost knob is our first one. We go to Holly. So you should be in your IO ICF. You have to create some inputs. So I'm all the way out here. So this first one that I got is right here, KP dial position. What you want to do is a CAN 20 volt. I just found that CAN 20 volt is easier. Uh, you can make them anything, but like if you want a, an actual, if you just want to switch, right? So like, I'll show you that here in a second. But since this is going to have like a numerical value from like zero to 10 for the dial position, I chose 20 volts, okay? Let's go to configure. Now, uh, the type is a 20 volt, you can, you know, or a custom 20 volt. Um, I just put unit as balls because the units don't matter. 
Um, let's go to can settings, right? So the can ID is zero. And if we refer back to my sheet here, Holly can ID is zero, right? Uh, the broadcast rate is 10 Hertz. The can device is a can IO module. Okay. So this is important. And the can channel is input number one. All right. So what that means is like, if you look at this list, input number one, we're in an IO module. This is what it's looking for, for input number one. This is what it's looking for, for input number one, if we were to simulate a second IO module. So some cars have multiple IO modules. This also understand that you can do this. If you already have a, an IO module in your car, um, just start in this red box right here and add eight of them. If you want to do a third, you can, you just offset all of these values by one. So, um, so anyway, there's our input one. Holly can ID is zero. Holly broadcast rate is 10 Hertz input one IO module can 20 volt. I just found 20 volt to be the easiest. Um, this is wired to the second CAN bus in the ECU. So that's on a J3 connector. Um, it's on CAN bus one from the PDM, but it's talking to CAN bus two in the ECU. So that's it. That's all you've got to do, right? That's literally all you have to do. So let's check some of the other ones. Um, let's see. This is water pump amperage, right? So I've already renamed these, right? Configure CAN settings, uh, zero input number two, CAN bus number two, CAN IO module, broadcast rate, done. I changed the units to amps because I want to see how many amps it draws, right? Um, so you can go back. Let's look at, uh, if you wanted to do just like, here's like a left turn indicator, right? So keypad left turn. Um, I just changed again, unit ball. I'm a child really. So uh, anyway, all it is, this means nothing. This, none of this means anything, right? All it is is just we want to send over. It's a zero and a one, right? So when the turn signal turns on, it's a one. When it turns off, it, turn, it, it goes to zero. So uh, all this is is a keypad date, if you will. So input number three, can I O module, uh, and so on and so on, right? So like if you wanted to make some more of them, um, you just do like here, can 20 volt. Um and you just call this one, well, I think we said uh, total amp, right? Total amps, uh, configure, and we go to can settings. Um, we're gonna change the can ID to one, right? Because now we're on to that, we're on to the 10th output, right? Can IO module, it's gonna be input number two, can bus number two, and we can go to sensor settings, change this to amps, and uh, yeah, whatever, that format's fine. And um, it will go over 20, right? It will read over 20. So, um, and then um, and then we're done, right? So when we plug into the car, we've got a total amp draw from the PDM coming across this thing. So um, I've already tested this, works great. Let me show you what you can do with some of this stuff. So here we have our KP, our keypad, I'm just calling it KP, keypad dial position, right? Um, the can info comes across the, uh, across the stream, um, and ooh, zero to 10. If we look at the hardwire can keypad, I have it set up for zero to 10. Where's boost knob expand. Do, do, do. My computer is like. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, yeah, so there you go. Ma maximum 0 to 10. You could change it to 15 if you wanted to, or 16, but I just 0 to 10, right? So that means it's going to give you a value of 0 through 10 as it sends it over to the can. Um, what I did was I set up a couple of advanced tables just as demos to kind of show you. So the first one, uh, two-step dial. So let's say we've got our... Uh, our dial is going to control how much we offset our rev limiter, right? So turbo car, one of the things you mess with, or a blower car, one of the things you mess with is rev limiter offset, like how high you move the two-step up and down. So what we're doing here is a keypad dial at zero, it does nothing. At one, it adds 50. At two, it adds 100. Three, it adds 150, yada, yada, yada. Works its way up, right? Um, 
Then here's another one. So it's a, I call it a boost dial, right? Dome dial. So right there is our Y axis of cape, uh, the keypad dial position. And right there it's zero through 10. And then, uh, X axis is boost time. Again, I just threw this together randomly. Uh, so at zero, at the zero position, it does nothing. At one, it adds, you know, six pounds. At two, it adds seven. At three, right there, it adds eight. Um, you're going to want to key these in unless you make your dial position go zero to 15, because all these are 15, right? So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it'd be zero through 15 because you have a zero, right? So, um, uh, so you can make your dial position or your dial on your keypad go to 15 instead of 16. Um, but, uh, what it, you know, I like to count the zero, so I would make it zero through 15. Uh, then you just scale your boost time right here like this. And now you have an offset. So you turn that thing up to four and the LEDs on the keypad light up at four and boom. Now you're offsetting your boost curve, your boost offset with a dial on the keypad. So, um, let me roll on over to my car here. Bear with me because I'm uh, rolling on over to the car here. Probably should have just got up and walked, huh? Anyway. All right, let's see here. Turn it on. Turn the, uh, turn the ECU on. And uh, let's see here. Let's plug into this thing and we'll show you live what it does. So, uh, USB link. Um, so I changed some inputs and outputs. Let's just hit send to ECU. It's probably going to tell me to power cycle because I added a bunch of crap. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's go offline. Power cycle. Here we go. USB link. Mm -mm. There we go. Okay. So first things first, let's go to the dashboard screen and you can see here's our inputs that we created, right? So there's our dial position, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you see how the dial position's moving? There we go. Okay. And now like here, so right here, like let's look at like water pump amperage, right? So water pump amperage, I'm just gonna hit the, uh, the switch for the water pump. So if we watch that, there we go. Draw 7.2 amps. Um, left turn. We can just scroll down a little bit. We can come down a little bit right there. Left turn, zero balls. One ball, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero. Cause it's set up to flash. So um, pretty neat. There's a lot of cool stuff that you could do with this. Um, you can, uh, I don't have total amps set up correctly, but that's okay. Uh, it's because I didn't load it into the PDM yet. So, um, so anyway, yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. See you.